Hey Design Squad, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna show you an interesting case. You know, some of the comments on my YouTube channel were quite interesting about, you know, vertical scrolling across the pages. Or how would you, let's say, if you would click something on one page and you would land on another page would re retain the vertical scroll or you know vertical positioning well that's like a really hard use case to imagine i thought that i would illustrate some other use case which then might give you some ideas of how to do so what i'm gonna do today is basically as you can see i have one page and on a mobile device it's probably much more relevant because you have such a limited real estate I have one page where i have four different options for users to tap and choose and an idea is that all the options are gonna land them on the same exact page which is second page which is a long list of text divided into those categories so if you remember on this one if I would let's say I don't know select engineering parameter capture I would land on this fictitious let's say FAQ page and scroll down to engineering parameter capture so I'm gonna show you how to do so and you know with that I think you can then get and answer all the other questions you might have about vertical scroll positioning and how to do so across the pages. So if you choose on one page, another page is gonna react depending on your option and the choice you pick. We're gonna use variables and revisit that because that's kind of like necessary to do, but let me show you exactly how that's done and how you can achieve that really, really quickly. So first and foremost, let me just stitch together those pages uh, this is the second page, so I just want to give it a back interaction, new interaction on click. I'm going to open page, page one, and then just copy a hotspot. So I have some statements already done and just over these bad boys and just let's say on click, I'm going to open page two and same for the other one and same for the fourth one. And as you can see, I'm quite rushing, so it's not about the details here, something like that. And if I preview, it immediately should work. So it opens a page, I can scroll down that page, but it always opens the same exact page at the same exact position, right? So that's something we need to avoid. And for that, we definitely need to use variables because if we have several options, we have to tell Axure that, hey, this option now is active and so do something. And you know, like I'm just gonna do, I could use four variables for each of them, but or I could just use one gate variable and just say, let's say, if I click on personal info, set that variable to one and then check in a new page saying, if that variable is one, well, scroll down to that specific area and that's it. So let me show you how it's done. First and foremost, I'm gonna go to our project tab and global variables and gonna add the variable, which is gonna be basically, I don't know, like a gatekeeper or something like that. And by default, it's gonna be zero, meaning if it's zero, it's just gonna open page as is. If it's something else, which we're gonna specify, we're gonna scroll down to specific option, right? So on click on this one, let's say, I'm gonna, before I actually open a page, I'm gonna set the variable value to one because this is our number one feature. And I'm just gonna be make sure to put it before you open a page because once it opens a page, it's gonna ignore everything else. So you need to put the set variable value first and do so for all of them. But we need to edit a value. So that's the second option, it's gonna be two. And a third option, it's gonna be three. And then the fourth, again, just make sure that the set variable value is before the open a page, because then it's actually is just gonna cut off the statement and it's not gonna do it. You wanna set variable first. Now I click it, our variable value is gonna be one right now. And then if I click on something else, well, is, it, is it gonna change? Nope, it's not gonna change. It sets the variable behind the scenes, but we're not reading the variable yet. So what we need to do now is on the page, on that long list page, there is a statement, if we add new interaction on nothing selected, meaning on the canvas, there is a thing called page load. And that's where the magic is gonna happen because we're gonna say, if, let's say here add logic so that's case one i'm gonna be like if value of variable gatekeeper equals one 
Then scroll to this bad boy. And then I can have another case. Quickly change to if again, because all of them can be true. And that's gonna be case two, and that's gonna be variable two. So as you can see, I'm gonna create several conditions for it to check. That's three, like so. And the fourth one is the last one. Uh, just need to remember to change the values like so. And now basically, depending on what we selected before, we're gonna double check here and then do the action. But as you can see, now the logic is in place. All we need to do is just add an action to move to the specific space. And for that, I can use a hotspot, let's say, or I can just use this. So as long as we give it a meaningful name, let's say title one, this is, let's say, title two. Boom, we need to just insert action for each of these ifs. Scroll to widget and select that title one. And now we scrolling vertically, we can animate it, uh, which I would like to do. So we're gonna ease in in half a second. Let's say if it's case two, we can copy paste that thing as, as long as you specify that it's now title two, which we just named. Same exact logic, copy paste again to the other statement and that's title three. And as you can see, this is as simple as that. It's super duper simple. It's just in a couple of minutes you can achieve what you're looking for, or at least in the next, if you have other issues, let's say you can apply the same logic and scroll down to the desired fragment. You know, it's, it's really up to you. But yeah, that should work. Let's test it out. Let's see if that actually is behaving as we want to. So now idea is if I go to personal info, it should just open a page and scroll to the first item. Boom, it already scrolls to the first item, but it's the, as you can see, because text field started just a couple of pixels above, it scrolled down and kind of chops off. If you want to adjust it, you can either stretch the text field more height-wise and then readjust it, or you can use hotspot and place it just slightly above. And, and instead of targeting title one, you're targeting hotspot one, let's say. So it's up to you. Let's say if we choose fourth, whoop, it goes down really quickly. So you might want to readjust as well the speed of those. Third, and let's try the now second one. Boom, and second one works too. So all of them work. That's as simple as that. that. That's all there is. I'm just gonna readjust these bad boys. So I'm gonna add, let's say 700 here. And then this is maybe a thousand hundred. And this is maybe a thousand three hundred or something like that. So we add a little bit. And so it's a bit gonna be a bit slower for the further ones. Otherwise it just instantly jumps and that's not really great, right? And how I said it to do is basically you can do this type of realignment if you wish and then just position it down below. So in that case, the text is not gonna be cut off and let me just actually show you how it's done. Again, experimenting, experiment on your own to cover these things, but boom, as you can see, it doesn't cut off. So if you can resize a text field, it's gonna work brilliantly for you as well. And if we go to fourth, boom, it's not as sudden and it's pretty cool. And if we go to third, whoop, it went to third. And if we go to second, lastly, boom. And I can just go back and forth as much, as many times as I want. And that's how we stitch together two pages. And we keep the same exact vertical positioning we want to, or we scroll down to a thing we want to on, you know, a secondary page. So there is a lot of the different like, ways to do so this is probably the simplest one and as per usual if you enjoyed this video leave a comment down below if you have any other questions give it a thumbs up smash that subscription button if you haven't done so and i'll see you next time